Following the defeat of Sauron in the War of the Ring, the Third Age ended with the departure of Lord Elrond, Lady Galadriel, the wizard Gandalf, and the ring bearers Bilbo and Frodo Baggins, who sailed from Middle-earth to live in the enchanted paradise of the Undying Land. With nearly all the elves gone and those that remained living in small realms of relatively little influence, the Fourth Age saw the continent come under the dominion of men led primarily by High King Elessar of the reunited kingdom of Gondor and Arnor, who in the year 6 FA demonstrated his kind heart and grateful, generous nature by gifting the Druidan Forest to the Druidine, a secluded group of tribal humans who aided the Free Peoples in the War of the Ring. Declaring that no man may enter their dominion, Alessar made a similar proclamation about the Shire, naming it a free land under the protection of the northern realm of Arnor, where none may venture without permission from the local hobbit population. Though Frodo and Bilbo were gone, the other Hobbit heroes from the War of the Ring prospered greatly in this new age, with Samwise Gamgee now wed to Rosie Cotton and living in Bag End, taking the family name Gardner before being elected as mayor of Mickle Delving. Likewise, his friend Mariaduck Brandybuck, already named an Esquire of Rohan, grew in rank and authority among their people by marrying Estella Bolger and becoming Master of Buckland in 11 FA, making him the patriarch of their large, well-known and respected family. Peregrine Took, meanwhile, who was previously honored as a Knight of Gondor and Guard of the Citadel, married Diamond of Longcleave, and became Thane of the Shire in 13 FA, a leader responsible for the defense of their realm as Master of the Shire Moot and Captain of the Shire Muster and Hobbitry in Arms. In addition to these respectable ranks within the Hobbit community, High King Elessar named Sam, Merry, and Pippin Counselors of the Northern Kingdom adding further prestige to these renowned heroes. Although the realm of Arnor ceased to exist centuries earlier, in 15 FA, Elessar at last journeyed from Gondor to re-establish the cities of Anuminas and Fornost, living for a time in this region while the population grew, confident in the era of peace and prosperity upon them. While traveling throughout the Northlands, King Alessar and his wife, Queen Arwen, visited their friends in the Shire, gifting Mayor Samwise the Star of the Dúnedain, a symbol worn by the Rangers of the Grey Company in the Third Age. Sam was then further honored when his daughter and eldest child Eleanor was named a Maid of Honor for the Queen. Yet the peace and prosperity of the Fourth Age was not entirely maintained without some measure of struggle and conflict, as the Eastern and Southern realms, previously loyal to Sauron, continued to resist and wage war against their hated enemies in Gondor. Seeking to end the threat against their realms, High King Elessar and his ally, King Eomer of Rohan, led military campaigns against the Easterlings and Haradrim, subduing their people beyond the Sea of Rune in the east and into the faraway lands of the south. They also dealt with the Corsairs of Umbar and in the end established a lasting peace, with the borders of the reunited kingdom expanding to match that of their golden age thousands of years earlier. With their lands now free from the dark influence and armies of Sauron, the dwarves and remaining elves of Middle-earth also prospered alongside their human allies. Therefore, Prince Legolas, a mighty elven champion and son of King Thranduil, led a segment of his people south from the Woodland Realm in 20 FA to establish a new home in Ithilien, and through their efforts made it the fairest country in all the Westlands. Having been enchanted by the marvelous stones, gems, and mineral deposits he saw in the White Mountains during the War of the Ring, the dwarven hero Gimli, son of Glowin and friend of Legolas, made a similar journey south, leading a group of his people to establish their own realm, becoming lord of the Glittering Caves. Knowing a population of industrious and skilled craftsmen now lived nearby, both Rohan and Gondor hired the dwarves of the Glittering Caves to create works of great beauty for their realm leading to the construction of the famous Gates of Minas Tirith, made from precious mithril and steel. In addition to having granted the Hobbits many gifts and privileges, relations between the reunited kingdom and Shire continue to be warm and generous throughout the entirety of LSR's reign, with Mayor Samwise and his wife even visiting and spending a year in Gondor from 21 to 22 FA. About a decade later, further lands were bestowed upon the Hobbits, with the Westmarch made a territory of the Shire. 
In 34FA, Sam's son-in-law, Fastrid of Greenholm, who married his daughter Eleanor, moved to the Tower Hills, where he was named Warden of the West March, starting a family which eventually became famous in their own right, known as the Fairbarns of the Towers. After serving seven consecutive terms, Samwise Gardner at last retired as mayor of Mickle Delving in 55 FA, and six years later was devastated to see his wife Rosie pass away. With his career over and spouse deceased, Samwise was ready to move on from Middle Earth, and so departed from the Shire, making a final stop to visit his daughter Eleanor in the Tower Hills, gifting her the Red Book of Westmarch, making her family the keepers of this treasured work for many generations, while adding their own contributions to its pages. Saying a final goodbye to his daughter, legends say Samwise continued on to the Grey Havens, where he, as the last ring bearer of Middle Earth, exercised his right to board a ship and sail west to the undying lands of Amon, reuniting with his old friend Frodo Baggins. After the departure of Sam, and with both their wives presumably deceased, Mary Aduck Brendibuck, now known as Mary the Magnificent, author of many great works, including Herb Lore of the Shire, The Reckoning of Years, and Old Words and Names in the Shire, and Peregrine Took, who spent his life creating a vast library in the Took family mansion of Great Smiles, received an invitation from King Aomer of Rohan, and so resigned their offices and left the Shire staying with the king until his death, after which his son Elfwine reigned as ruler of Rohan. The hobbits moved on and spent the remainder of their days in Minas Tirith with High King Elessar, until at last succumbing to old age, when they were entombed in Roth Dinen, given a place of honor among the fallen heroes of Gondor. With the veterans who fought in the War of the Ring advancing in years, many more started to pass on, including Faramir, husband to Eowyn in 82 FA, leaving his position as Prince of Ithilien and Steward of the Reunited Kingdom to his son Elberon. After over a century of rule, Elessar at last died in 120 FA, leaving his son Eldarion as High King of the Reunited Kingdom. In order to honor their friendship, the tombs of Merry and Pippin were then moved to lay alongside the deceased ruler. Losing all joy in life, as her father once feared, Queen Arwen did not wish to live without her beloved husband, and so left Gondor to spend her final months living alone in the now abandoned realm of Lorien before at last succumbing to grief and passing away. Meanwhile, with their friends dead and realms well established, Legolas built a ship and with Gimli at his side, left Middle-earth, sailing west to the undying lands of Amon, where they reunited with Frodo, Sam, Gandalf, and others. Although Gimli was a mortal dwarf who never held a ring of power and thus was not permitted to enter the undying land, some say his unique friendship with Legolas, which represented an unusual bond between members of races who were enemies for much of their history, was enough for the Valar to grant an exception. Others, however, claim this was not enough, and so perhaps Lady Galadriel, an ancient and powerful elf of great repute and influence, spoke on Gimli's behalf, remembering him fondly as the dwarf hero who acted with great respect and admiration when they met in Lorien, and who afterwards praised her wisdom and beauty for the rest of his life. At some point during the Fourth Age, the elves Celeborn, Círdan, and whoever else wished to join them departed on the last ship to the Undying Lands, while some like the Sylvan and Avari refused to leave, choosing to spend the rest of their days in Middle-earth, becoming figures of seclusion so rarely seen they were remembered by most men as creatures of myth. As for the dwarves of Durin's folk, they prospered greatly for a time, when Durin the Seventh reigned as king, leading a great migration to reclaim their ancient homeland of Khazad-dûm. But as the centuries passed, they too were seldom seen outside their mountains, becoming figures of legend. With many of the heroes from the Third Age gone, the men of the Fourth Age continued on, enjoying the peace and prosperity their forefathers fought to attain. Yet in time, many of their sacrifices and the horrors of war were forgotten, and so by the year 220 FA, a hundred years into the reign of High King Eldarion, a new shadow arose in Gondor, when men, growing bored of peace and corrupted by the teachings of a man named Harumor, joined a cult dedicated to the worship of Sauron, recruiting those who in their youth played at being orcs and caused mischief for their own amusement. However, these troublemakers could do little damage when compared to the great evils of the past, and so the reign of Eldarion continued, 
with some claiming his royal lineage lasted for a hundred generations, seeing his descendants rule over many realms and kingdoms until the birth of a new age. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Sir Daeron of House Ashford, Sir Elendil of Numenor, Sir Jeremiah Ironside of House Comcia, and Fred Heartless, Knight of Iron and Ice. If you'd like to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and click the links below, or else go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.